there are three main characters in the warehouse, and that is Gibson, Paxton, and Zinnia. Gibson is the CEO of the company, and he has just been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and so he has about a year to live. So this is a man who built the biggest company in the world, who is worth $300 billion. This is a seismic shift in the American economy, the fact that he's on his way out the door. The other two characters are Paxton and Zinnia, and they're in one of the warehouse facilities. And what these facilities are is they're sort of based on the Foxconn model. And Foxconn is a Taiwanese company that manufactures things like iPhones and, and other electronics. And they build these giant live-work facilities all over Asia where you don't just work, you also live in dormitory style housing. But because you live in the housing there, the conditions are not great and they pay you less and they expect you to work 12 hour days. So it's imagining that model moved over to America. That's what Gibson did. He basically moved that model to the US and he also cracked drone delivery. So that made him like the big uh, retail giant. I wanted to write a book where it's sort of took this idea of big government, you know, like everyone's afraid of like big government, like in 1984. But, but I think in reality, big business is becoming more of an issue where businesses are writing laws and politicians are basically doing whatever they want because they get to send out campaign mailers saying like, hey, you know, I created X amount of jobs in my district. Isn't this great? And in reality, it's like they're basically just leaving an open door for businesses to write you know, anti-union laws for pharmaceutical companies to write really terrible laws that hurt people in the realm of healthcare. You know, I, I think it's the place that we're at now where <clears throat> we've basically ceded control. We've decided that, you know, job makers, they're, they're great, they, they, they can do whatever they want. And that's not a great reality to be in. I hope people who read this book start thinking a little bit about the human cost and they think about their own relationship to their own jobs because we accept an awful lot of things that we should not accept. You know, I know people who won't use their vacation days because they're afraid it makes them look like they're not dedicated to their job. And vacation days are a right. You know, like we, we, we should have that opportunity. Um, I, I was actually just in London and I was talking to a friend and, and he was like, do you really only get two weeks vacation in America? I'm like, yeah, how much do you get? He's like, we get a month. And I'm like, well, that's not great. But that's sort of what is expected here. You know, like we, I, I think we work harder, more is expected of us. And, and with the way the, uh, I, I think there was sort of like a, a fracture years and years ago where companies had to start cutting costs. And so that's why a lot of people are now doing the work of like two or three people. You know, positions get eliminated, nobody wants to fill them, no one wants to pay more salary, more healthcare, whatever. So you end up in staffing situations where people are really kind of pushed to their limits. Uh, so, so, so this is all to say that I, I think that I, I hope people are a little bit more cognizant about the way the economy is structured right now, because I think there's a lot of things that we sort of accept as standard that should not be standard or just really are not appropriate.